Hello everyone and welcome back to FX Express Trends. My name is JD and today I will be rating some more outfits for you guys. This time I will be covering the 70s rock girl group called The Runaways. Now before introducing them, I do want to explain the layout of this video as it is a little bit different from the rating video I did last time. Last time I covered Hide Matsumoto and for that video I specifically grouped different outfits of his. I would group together his outfits of the same variant, but this time because I'm going to be covering five girls of the main lineup, I'm only going to be showcasing one outfit per person. So I might do a second video regarding the Runaways, but as of right now, I've only picked out one outfit for the main lineup. Each outfit is exclusive to their 70s run. I might discuss their outfits in their later careers through the 80s on, but as of right now, this is exclusive only to the 70s, so I'm looking at them between the ages of 15 and 17 as that those were their respective ages while in this band. Anyways, with that out of the way, I'm going to give you guys a little introduction about the Runaways if you do not know who they are. So the Runaways were an all-girl rock band um, formed in the 70s under their producer and manager Kim Fowley. Despite the band being short-lived, they found great success within that small time period, especially being an all-girl rock band when that wasn't primarily a thing in the 70s and more prominent in the 80s as we know today. Their sound and energy and attitude was super loud, gritty, dirty, raw, you know, everything you would expect from a rock band. But the thing is, is that because they were an all-girl group, it was quite surprising and they were able to keep up with all of the male-only rock bands. I love how powerful, fierce, and intimidating they were. They definitely knew how to command a stage and, you know, despite their ages at the time, they were killing it. The Runaways really were something special and instead of fading away, they did burn out, ultimately disbanding due to creative differences, but there's also a lot of issues behind the scenes that kind of contributed to their disbanding. I'm not going to talk about it now because a lot of those topics are very deep, very heavy. I want to keep this video super lighthearted, so... I mean, there's other sources you can go to if you want to learn more about The Runaways on your own. There's movies, there's Cherie Curry's biography. Um, there's so many things concerning The Runaways, even like interviews. Well, everyone went their own ways, and um, most of the members did have successful careers after The Runaways. I mean, just look at Joan Jett, Lita Ford. Cherie Curry even did some side stuff on her own, even with her sister. So now that you know a little bit more about them, I'm going to go through the actual ratings now. Again, I'm going to go over Joan, Cherie, Lita, Sandy, and Jackie. Okay, so the first outfit that I'm going to go over is worn by Joan Jett. So here, Joan is wearing like this super casual outfit. She's got her iconic band tee. She's got some jeans on, a little leather jacket and all that. It's very, very simple. This is something that I would wear on a regular basis. This is a very solid outfit, but despite it being very simple, I feel like the accessories um, and the jacket, of course, just give off more attitude and flair. Now, I really like the layered necklace. The glove situation is really neat as well. It just adds a nice touch to the outfit, and it makes her look, like, extra tough. The sunglasses. I love me some good sunnies. The outfit is super casual and iconic, and whenever I think of Joan, I usually think of this outfit. It's super tough, and there's, like, this overall badassery, you know, just emitting from her and her spirit in this outfit and everything. The, uh, the Ramones band tee shows that you know she, she's a rock fanatic um, she's sporting her leather jacket now there's different designs out there this one's quite simple but I mean like if you want to spice it up a bit you can change jackets here and there so I love how versatile this piece is because with the band tee and the jeans alone there is a lot that you can work with you can add to the outfit you can ri rid of some of the pieces to me this is like her casual streetwear kind of outfit and a lot of the photos between her and the other members of the Runaways, you know, this is just something that she would always wear out, minus few of the accessories here and there, but this is like a solid 7 out of 10 outfit. I really love this, but at the same time, there are more outfits in her career later on that I really, really love. You know, I love over-the-top outfits, but I feel like I also need to appreciate 
the more simplistic ones. All right, next up we have Cherie Curry and her silver and black play suit. Oh my gosh. Other touring outfits, this is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I believe this was from their Japan tour. She always seems to be having fun in this, this outfit. And um, in her live performances, she's kind of like rocking back and forth and ma making big movements like in this outfit specifically. And I absolutely live for that. She just looks like she's having so much fun. I love the silver and black contrast. Everyone had their own thing. It was a combination of black, silver, white, red. But, you know, this one just stood out to me a lot. The outfit does look kind of restraining, but in contradiction, like, she was actually able to move in this. I don't know, maybe it's the material choice. However, it does look more like a stage costume than anything. It's kind of, like, on the cuff of, like, Halloween and glam rock, but... I feel like it works. It works for that time frame and it's super cute on her and she just looks fabulous. Her black boots are insane but I really adore the silver platforms that she would sometimes sport with the outfit. The shoes are just everything and I love how she went back and forth between different platforms. I love a good platform and I, I wish I had like those silver ones. They're just so pretty. There's also another small detail I really like about this outfit and that is the black star on the back of it. There's all these different patches on the front, like the shoulders, around the knee. There's also some patches around her hips. It's a nice contrast in color from the silver, but I just, I thought the star on the back was so cute. Her stage presence is so fierce, and through her stances and movements, you can tell that she's really feeling herself. You can feel the energy. She just seems so lively in it. There is another outfit similar to the silver one but it is like this long sleeve white outfit. And with this one, she has her silver gloves and her silver platforms. Um, it's quite similar. I couldn't choose between this one and the silver play suit, but they're both equally really, really cute. And um, <laughs> it's really cute, but I wanted to choose her silver outfit because I wanted to showcase different outfits for the other girls without referring too much to the outfits used in the Japan tour. But anyways, I do give this outfit an 8 out of 10. It is, it's, it's fire. I love it. Okay, so next up is Sandy West. Now, I chose this outfit because it's just the iconic 70s silhouette, and she just looks like she's in her element. She embodies the look and feel of the 70s. You know, she's got those iconic high-waisted and flared jeans. She's got this really casual top on. I really like this outfit because it's super sporty, and I don't know what it is, but, you know, because she's from California, she has this kind of surfer girl kind of vibe, and she seems just very athletic outside of the band. Another reason I love this outfit is because it captures her youth quite well. Um, remember, all the girls were between 15 and 17, and she looks her age. Like, she looks appropriately dressed despite, you know, all the stage costumes and stuff that they'd have to wear. I really like it. She just looks so happy and free. She seems very laid back in the kind of person that you could easily get along with. Whenever she has some sort of sporty gear, she looks super happy and in her element, and these pictures definitely reflect that. The striped shirt is very, very cute and simple, but my favorite part about this is definitely the jeans. You can definitely tell that this was from the 70s because the, the hem of the jeans are so long that they cover her shoes. Like, you, her feet are non-existent here. And also the buttons at the top, um are very cute. I love how they're kind of aligned on each side, super symmetrical, and it adds to that high-waisted kind of look. I don't know, it's just, it's very cute, it's very simple, it's very sandy, and I think she looks amazing. So, that being said, 7 out of 10, she looks great. Next up is one of my favorites um lita ford in this racing kind of outfit i love lita so much so there's definitely bias to this outfit what i'm going to say about the rating all of that kind of stuff i feel like she took her signature look her signature silhouette and she just kind of amped it up 
in the most fun way possible. She always wore these high-waisted booty shorts to her shows. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like that was a staple thing in the shows because she would just always wear shorts. Here, it's kind of like in a jumpsuit romper kind of style. I love how she kept the knee-high silver boots. I feel like everyone had these boots in the band, but, you know... I, I can't get over it. They are so pretty and they're so 70s, like these go-go boots. <laughs> boots nicely pair with like the romper slash play suit kind of thing. It adds a nice contrast to the white and the red of the suit because it looks very speed racer, I dare say. Um, <laughs> just, despite like those little accents, compared to the band, they look like a proper girl group, you know? I really like the color palette and the use of red and white. It's super pretty. Red is one of my favorite colors. It just makes the look seem super fresh, and I'm very fond of the color blocking um, of the faded romper. Like I said, it is quite fitted, and it tapers to her waist nicely. You know, it's got that nice cinching. It looks very proportionate on her figure, and if it weren't for those silver platform boots, I feel like it. I feel like the outfit would be very imbalanced. So with that being said, of course, I gotta give this outfit a 9 out of 10. Lita is just so pretty, and I definitely love this outfit. But um, yeah, again, there is bias. There was bias in that answer. <laughs> and lastly, we have Jackie Fox in this all red outfit. So according to Pinterest, Jackie almost always wears the blouse. Um, whenever she's not wearing a tank top, of course. But um, of the blouses that I have found on Pinterest, <laughs> um, I really like the red one. Um, it was quite different from all the other blouses, so I had to include this one. I just had to. The material of the top is quite interesting because I cannot tell if it's like this velvet or a silk kind of material, but it just somehow works. It looks shiny, but also like, velvety if that makes sense like it like you know like that soft kind of smooth material this outfit is quite interesting but it keeps me guessing and i really like that about this outfit seems like it could be a matching set and it's really nice for what it is i find the sleeves to be really cool in this outfit because there is a slit down the sleeve and the movement of the top seems super flowy especially in comparison to the torso which is a little bit more cinched and tighter um I don't want to say that this outfit is like restraining or anything but you know there's definitely some structure to it it's super flowy super 70s and it reflects jackie a lot because she was a little bit more like you know girly i feel like she was very well put together that made her a little bit more classy but i really love how she embodied like this 70s kind of outfit and she made it her own because it, it definitely doesn't seem like something that a rock star would wear but at the same time like she made it her own and she just looks so in her element it's really bothering me whether it's velvet or silk or some other kind of material um i just can't put my finger on it so if you know it um you, you can guess down below in the comments Anyways, I do like how the pants are flared and it has like that 70s bell sleeve kind of thing. Overall, the outfit seems a lot more comfortable and casual than stage outfits. But um, yeah, I just think this is such an interesting outfit. Um, it's very unique and I feel like I got to learn more about Jackie as I was looking for an outfit to kind of talk about. But like this one just really stood out to me. And for that, I will give it a 7 out of 10. The blouse situation is just so cool. Um, it, it keeps you guessing. It, it just does. It keeps you guessing in, like, the best way. But anyways, that was all of the outfits that I chose for the main lineup. I hope you liked the outfit I chose for each girl. It was super fun going through and finding different outfits that not only embodied the 70s, but also the group and the individual as much as possible. The Runaways really were special. I love them so, so, so much. As far as my music taste goes, I'm not that much into the 70s rock scene, but at the same time, you know, the Runaways are just so iconic and their sound is quite unique for that time and for the girls, especially launching their own careers in the future. As for recommendations, they're pretty much going to be based off of the main lineup I talked about. 
I'm very biased and fond of the era where Cherie Curry was still the vocalist. So as for songs, I really recommend Queens of Noise, California Paradise, and Dead and Justice. I believe they are all on the same album, the self-titled one, but you can find most of them in their Live in Japan album. In my opinion, they were best live because that their sound just seemed a lot more richer. I really like Cherie's performances in the live album especially since she was able to sing queens of noise because that song was specifically for her um but instead the studio version is joan singing the song i prefer sheree um again biased but then again i am just so fond of these five girls i will make sure to link my spotify playlist of the runaways music anyways it will be there in the description below if you want to check them out not only does it include the runaways but it also has joan jet lita ford and sheree curry's side projects as well i feel like the closest that you'll ever get to a full-on runaways album slash sound slash reunion or whatever is Cherie Curry's Boulevard of Splendor. Now this album was produced under Blackheart Records, which is Joan Jett's own record label. I would say Roxy Roller is the closest you would get to a Runaways sounding song. The whole album is amazing. I absolutely recommend this one. My favorite is probably the opening Mr. X. But anyways, you know, those are my recommendations, so if you want to check it out, go ahead, check the Spotify. The Runaways are just so darn cool, and I'm glad I got to cover them this time. You know, last time I did say I was going to cover bands that weren't just, you know, like Visual K, um, Japanese kind of bands. So I think this is a good start. Again, there are many bands and artists that I do want to cover. I love rock music so much, and it definitely influences my style. Hopefully next time I will cover someone new. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my discussion and rating of The Runaways. But for now, that's it. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.